I've never had a good grasp of sound or music. I played the violin for a year. I've had two guitars. I can't sing. I tried to once and when I looked out into the audience, they were all dead. Some say sound is the most important aspect of a film. You can get away with bad visuals, but not bad audio. Sound is 70% of the film, even more. All these quotes are completely true. You can get away with a visual slip up every now and then, but bad audio completely screams amateur. If this video was recorded on the microphone on my phone, the value of this video and your opinion on the advice I am giving you would be greatly reduced. This is the video that you're going to hate because I'm going to say you have to spend money. You're going to have to dig into your pockets for this. The tutorials beforehand has been about getting the film look on the cheap, but you can't cheap out on sound. So many people spend money on a 5D, some glass, a fancy shoulder rig, and then they buy a Rode video mic for a 30 minute short film. It's not going to cut it. If you want to do something that screams, hey, I'm a pro, but I'm really not, you're going to have to get good sound. So, how much am I asking you to spend? On average, well, $280, £150 for a mic, a Rode NTG2. $300, £185 for a Rode Blimp. $250, £270, I have no idea how that currency exchange is working, for a Tascam DR100, the Mark 1 version. $129, £70 for a Rode Boom Pole. $25, £15 for a decent XLR cable. $40 to £200 for a memory card. And this is the biggie, $900, £590 for a Sound Devices Mix Pre. So in total, you're looking at $1,800 plus, or £1,300 plus. This is a hell of a lot of money. Then there are some other items which aren't hugely important, but they help out with your job. And they are an audio mixing bag, a shock mount for when you're inside and setting up the blimp is too cumbersome, then a pelican case for protecting your gear, and the list goes on and on. So what are our three main components and what do they do? We have a microphone, a portable recorder, and a field mixer. Everyone and their two-year-old knows what a microphone does, but knowing how to capture the sound is something that eludes most DSLR users. A common problem I hear is the noise. This. <sighs> now, remember the noise isn't just the electronic pickup from your devices, your, your camera or your recorder, but the surroundings, the room tone, the wind noise. So you get a better recording by having a greater signal to noise performance. Now, you cannot remove the noise from electric equipment and you can't stop the wind. So to minimize the noise, you want to get as much signal as possible. This is achieved by getting the microphone as close as possible to the subject speaking. Every time you move away from your subject, the signal is reduced and you're decreasing your signal to noise ratio. And unlike visuals where you may be able to pop the footage into After Effects and rotoscope the boom out of shot, post-production isn't going to help with bad sound. Different microphones have different polar patterns and understanding these polar patterns can help you capture the best audio on set. This is the polar pattern for the microphone I have suggested, the NTG2. Now the NGT2, or a shotgun mic in general, has a very narrow pickup pattern. It picks up from the front and picks up some signal from the rear. The side elements and areas where the mic picks up, this is part of the interference tube, which rejects sounds from the side. So you know a little bit about the mic, but how do you position it? When I first started, I had the good old Rode video mic positioned on the camera and I thought pointing it directly towards the actor speaking was the right thing to do right? No. You want to position it so it's near enough all the way down or near enough all the way up. That way you don't pick up any of the background noise that may be behind your subject or behind you. You get the clean audio and the mic is ignoring the sounds from around. If you're shooting the entire film inside, it may be best to invest in a hypercardioid microphone as their polar pattern rejects everything around 120 degrees to the back of the microphone, which is going to be very useful for shops with, for example, a group of people talking indoors. For myself, for the shoots I do, a lot of them are exterior shoots, so uh, I've gone for the shotgun microphone approach. I have the NTG3, and when you're inside, as long as you don't get the microphone too close to the subject, as you will start to hear a lot of bass tones, you should be able to pull off a shotgun microphone inside the house. That's the microphone. Let's take a look at the recorder. We have the Tascam DR100. With the Rode video mic that plugs straight into the camera, it's only using a 3.5 mm jack, which in some cases may be okay, but directly from a mic into a recording piece of equipment isn't recommended. Having an external recording device such as the Zoom H4M or the Tascam DR100 allows you to hook up your mic using an XLR cable, which is going to get you clean, clean audio. And I know a cable is a cable, but you, you do get what you pay for, so I wouldn't suggest cheaping out on a cheap XLR cable. 
the Zoom H4n doesn't respond that well to the MGT2, so I highly recommend getting the Tascam DR100. It's a lot more rigid and it'll take a few drops. Though I don't suggest dropping it either. This was my setup for a year, it's pretty reasonable. However, there were a good few scenes that sounded pretty terrible, and it was because we couldn't get that mic close enough, and if we were to push the levels up on the recorder, the noise would become more apparent. And with a shotgun mic indoors, as I said earlier about removing your distance to stop those bass tones, this was also a problem. So enter the preamp. The sound device's mix pre is a field mixer and a mic preamp. It's rugged, it's made from good metal so it can take some impact, a lot more impact than the Tascam DR100 can take, and it contains unclippable limiters. So if set properly, it will not blow out any sound. With the mix pre, what you're able to do is throttle back the noise, and then you replace the noise with clean gain from the preamp, leaving nothing but amazing audio for your production. So if you spent $3,000 for your camera equipment and a few lenses, you're really going to need to spend the same amount on audio. It's not something you can pass by on. Bad audio always screams an amateur production. Now there is a book which is a godsend for learning about location audio. I have the link to purchase the book from Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk in the description. As always, comment, subscribe, like. More audio tutorials will be flooding this channel this week so keep an eye out for those happy filmmaking see you soon